What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we're going to talk about the things you need to know when visiting Nepal. Let's do it. Okay, first thing to talk about is arrival into Kathmandu. That's where most of you will be making your entrance into the country. They have a visa on arrival for most countries. Aside from like India, I think they have it a little bit easier, maybe some other surrounding countries, but if you're coming from the United States, the UK, or some other country, they have visa on arrival. You can go to the website, Nepalis, uh, immigration.gov. I'll put a link below. It's something like that. But you can apply ahead of time, which will save you time when you get to the airport. If you don't, go to that website and get a pre-approval or uh, the visa on arrival screenshot. Then you have to go to the kiosk. And then from the kiosk, you go to the payment counter, give them 50 US dollars. It's best to make the payment in US dollars, not Nepali money. I had Nepalese money, but that was not what the uh, preferred currency was. It was US dollars. And then from there, you go to the immigration counter. They give you your passport stamp, and then you enter the country. And there you are, you're in Nepal. Okay, now let's talk about the money, the currency. The currency you use here is called the Nepali rupee, okay? Now, one US dollar equals 133 Nepali rupees at the time I'm making this video. But they also take card but truth is cash is king here uh, every time I've used my card it seems like it's a five to ten minute ordeal usually with them saying oh it doesn't accept your card let me check the machine I know American Express is definitely not widely accepted here but I've had issues with Visa and MasterCard so cash is king I would say if you can get here with 50,000 Nepali rupee you'll probably be uh, good for a, a while quite affordable but one of the things I did notice was fluctuating prices for example they'll tell you oh it's 1,000 rupee for a taxi per hour right well you do two and a half hours next thing you know you're paying 5,000 and they say why and then they say oh well this and that so the fluctuating price thing even even if you try to agree with it before you go and you get a price fixed by the end there's always this adjustable uh, price inflation for some reason that you didn't expect. Now let's talk about food. I'm here at the Western Tandoori House. And here's my first meal in Nepal. It is beer yon. This is mutton kadai with garlic naan. Tikka masala. Garlic naan. And this here is a beef konji. It's like a porridge. Got some pork ribs here. And rice biryani. Again. This is kakali chicken. Okay. It's a mixed set plate. Chicken sikwa. Yeah. And radish pickle. Fermented. So we have Naples tali. This here is. Same pickle. Radish pickle. Pickled relish. Yeah. Chicken curry and some base, like uh, this one is the, what is that? Basil. No. Greens. Cauliflower. And this one is called dal. Dal. And this one is gulab jamun and plain yogurt. Plain yogurt, okay, thank you so much. Now let's talk about cost and affordability. So you'll notice all across Nepal, there is a di like two tiered uh, payment system. So there's like, a price for Nepalese and people from India and China, which is much lower. And then there's a higher price for people from everywhere else, including the United States and Europe. Some people think that's unfair, but really, if you think about it, um, I mean, the economy is unfair. You're coming from an economy where there's so much more value to your money. And then you come here, you can take advantage where their economy is so low. So, I mean, it makes sense for a two tiered system. So one thing you'll notice when you arrive in Kathmandu or in Nepal in general is that it feels like you're back in like 1980s. So Kathmandu or Nepal area, this whole place was never colonized. It's one of the oldest continuous cultures and civilizations you'll find. So you're definitely going to get more of that down to earth experience here in Nepal than you would get in other countries around the world where globalism is stretching out its tentacles and growing. Nepal, you're not going to notice much 
modern infrastructure here. All right, now let's talk about safety. So as I'm on the new road here in Kathmandu, I'm thinking about, is it safe? And I wanna share this information, what I've discovered about Nepal. So it is considered a safe place out in the Himalayas or backpacking around. The biggest thing you have to worry about is natural disasters or any sort of weather. Uh, they can really affect you when you're a backpacker going up into the Himalayas, obviously, but that's the biggest threat, more so than uh, petty crime or violent crime. Every once in a while, you'll come across some scamming, which we have already talked about, but uh, the scamming stuff typically only happens in the tourist areas. Most of the people are very down to earth and friendly. Uh, you do have to watch out for uh, like any sort of mass gatherings or protests in the event that those should pop off or occur because civil unrest can be a thing here in uh, Nepal. But overall, I found it to be safe walking around as a solo traveler. I've been here for about four to five days. Uh, today's a half day. But yeah, I found it to be safe walking around. People weren't really uh, doing anything threatening. There was no threats of violence. But like I said, in the tourist areas, especially at night, you do have to pay extra careful attention. So when you come to Kathmandu, if you guys are looking for information, you can contact my friend here and he'll help give you information about tours and all that. I'll put his contact information below. Hello, hi. Now let's talk about transportation here in Nepal. So you have taxis, which are the predominant way to get around the cities. Then you have buses, and then you have airplanes to go long distance. For example, if you went to Pokhara from uh, Kathmandu, you'd probably take either a bus or a plane. It takes about a half hour in the air to go by plane. But if you took a bus, it would take around eight to 10 hours, depending on traffic. There is no trains. Taxi you could take, but it might be expensive. So bus or plane, but definitely plane. Even if you're trying to go up into the Himalayas, they do have buses or taxis. Don't expect to go very far fast because the mountains are windy roads, traffic. That's been my experience so far. Now let's talk about scams and things that I've seen around here. So Kathmandu, Nepal, they definitely have scams. Most of the people are extremely friendly, but you do have to watch out for scams, especially if someone's approaching you, telling you that they want to offer you a service or show you something just off the street like hawking. Usually there's going to be a little bit of a scam associated with that, so you do have to be cautious. Also, I would recommend if you do go out for beers and drinks, that you just pay attention to your drink at all times. Make sure they open it in front of you. I'm not saying it's dangerous or anything. I'm just saying that I have noticed it, and I've even been told by the locals, hey, you got to kind of be a little bit cautious. Now let's talk about some facts or things that you should know. When you get here, there is around 30 million people. The language here is called Nepali, so if you're looking to download a language on Google Maps or Google Translate, that's the one that you would do. Definitely have Google Maps ready to go. I'd recommend downloading the offline version before you get here so that you have that offline version for any areas you explore like uh, Kathmandu or Pokhara. There is 30 million people that live here and probably the most scenic destination is going to be Pokhara over Kathmandu, although Kathmandu is the capital. So now let's talk about the religion. So as you know, Gautama, Buddha, Siddhartha, he was born here in Nepal. But the main religion is uh, Hindu, although they all adhere to a Buddhist philosophy. So the religion is Hindu with a Buddhist philosophy. That's what most of these temples are all about. Okay, now let's talk about the weather and the things you need to know. So there's five different climate zones here. There's everything from alpine above the uh, clouds, you know. Eight of the 10 tallest peaks in the world are here. So it's got the highest mountain range in the Himalayas, Mount Everest obviously being the tallest. But there's also subtropical, there's tropical jungles. So the weather varies. Right now I'm here in November uh, in Kathmandu. Actually, it's December 1st now, but it is chilly at night, a little bit chilly in the afternoon, not too bad. I would say it's in the low 70s, high 60s. At night, it gets into the high 50s. That's degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, yeah, I would say they say the best time of year is during November and December if you want to do trekking because it's not too hot. But if you went up into the mountains, there would be snow because it's so high up there. Thank you everyone for watching Island Hopper TV. If you enjoyed this one, please consider watching another one of our videos. We have a recommended video and another video for you to watch next.